We are very grateful. Good afternoon to all of you. We thank uh, Pastor Betty, uh, Pastor Song, with all the pastors from the Transformation Singapore. We thank you all for the invitation for us to have the opportunity to come once again to be able to meet. Although we're not physically together, but our hearts are connected. So today, as we get it here, this is the third session. Uh, initially, uh, actually, our uh, for each week, if our sermon for 45 minutes, it's hard to be able to cover all. But before these, we've used a lot of uh, uh, enable us to be able to explain the the uh, the hermeneutical. Uh, and able us to uh, better understand his word. The last few sessions, two sessions, the whole Bible from chapter four of Genesis all the way to chapter 20 of book of Revelations. So actually the whole Bible talks about the prayer altar and about the priest and uh, the sacrifice. So started with the Torah, the, the five books of Moses, it mentioned about at the time the foundation of this, of these five books, the uh, first five books uh, of the Old Testament mentioned about the uh, prayer altar, how do we communicate with God? And also from the second half for uh, uh, Exodus all the way to uh, the, the first five books of uh, Moses, a great majority was about, about the tabernacle, in terms of uh, the system that was set up between human and God. You've seen the whole Bible to the Kings, uh, first and second Kings, first and second Samuel, all discuss about God raised up dif different Kings in his kingdom. The most critical key for Kings to be able to flourish in terms of whether the King, how did those king and their people treat the word of God? In other words, how did they treat the priest, the, the altar, and the sacrifice? We've seen that the prophets, the major and minor prophets, all told us, reminded us that God has seen this when the sacrifice was incorrect and the priests were not correct, right, uh, and the altar was uh, off. All these uh, books were telling us what God does God want exactly. But when men uh, uh, distort what God wanted, so finally God decided to use his own son to as a sacrifice. And the most important thing is God has entrusted to all of us, our body is the temple of God. Why, didn't, why doesn't he say that our body is something else? Where does God say that our body is the temple of God? Don't forget that our body is forming the image and likeness of God. So this is critical that his temple is precious and he has entrusted his church. The most important job is to become a priest, the kingdom of priests. Not only be a member of a local church, We've also seen that the, the Messianic believers and Gentiles believers to form the one new man church, that Christ himself would be the head of this one new man church. So we could see that we need to be very familiar with the word of God. So we come before him in our spiritual life. Maybe we came, uh, maybe we came to the Lord five years ago, but have we grown? as time evolved. It's possible that we have known the Lord for many years, but our life still hasn't changed at all. So the church talks about offering, there are many church activities, but in terms of knowing God himself, we have not progressed at all. So our spiritual life essentially had stalled and ceased moving forward. So how do we have breakthroughs? But the thing is, we want to have breakthroughs, but we don't want to do it according to God's ways of breakthrough. 
we're not going to like uh, the we're not it's not like we go to the warehouse club and pick whatever we want we must learn to accept everything that god has pre prescribed for us we need to say amen to all that he has prescribed to us we're willing to listen and hear we're willing to follow accordingly over the last uh, a few thousand years we'll look at the church history oftentimes the church has digressed the church is filled with many activities and trying to attract uh, the world into the church. But oftentimes we discover the word of God, where exactly is it? In the end time, our current era, have we, do we accurately measure what exactly is the circumstances of our uh, current generation? Like right now, you need to d d discern whether it's Omicron or BA.5 or 0.275. We need to evaluate, assess, and judge like the virus undergo different uh, sub-variant form. So also transformation is one that continue to uh, transform our relationship with God. So how do we set apart from the current world culture system? We need to see what exactly is the structure of the society. Over the last two sessions, I've kept reminding everyone that we are living in the end time. And the days of, let's look again at the uh, Second Timothy 3, uh, verse 1 to 8. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, having nothing to do with such people. They are the kind who warm their way into the homes and gain control over gullible women, who are loaded down with sins are, are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth, just as Janus and Jambres opposes Moses. So also these teachers opposes the truth. They are men of depraved minds who, as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected. We now we look at uh, in the marketplace, oftentimes these are individuals that we come across. We discover that in our uh, marriage uh, our potential, a prospect for our as a spouse are also immersed in this kind of culture and value system. Couldn't be that the same situation uh, also uh, in terms of uh, inside the church. And as we try to pastoral provide pastoral care to others, uh, also these are individuals do not like the word of God, don't like to learn about and also resist the word of God. So here, here say, it says that they are rejected. So this is a condition with the end time. We need to know that in our marketplace, that those that were whom we uh, are providing pastoral care or our business partner or our classmates, uh, many of them are immersed in this uh, sort of environment. Also, we mentioned about the uh, that the image of gold that uh, in the, the book of Daniel in Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar uh, from all the way to Roman to Greek and, and we're currently in the end times. None of us could deny that we're in the end times now. Also, James chapter five, verse one to three. We need to jointly, exactly, we're like in a swimming pool. What is the quality of the pool, of the water? Is it full of, uh, uh, full of seagrass? Or is it full of, uh, of pollution with uh, uh, oil, petroleum leak? It seems like the condition we're at, it is uh, full of uh, tremendous challenges. So chapter five of book of James, one to three. Now listen, you rich people weep and wail because of the misery that is coming upon you. Your wealth has rotted and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. 
Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvester have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who was not opposing you. So you discover that in the end time, that everyone trying to be well off. So we've seen that, said in the end time, that you're only trying to hoard it, the wealth. So that also uh, mentioned the uh, uh, Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres mentioned about uh, uh, the, the actually out of $100 US dollar, 30% uh, of those who are, came from just printed out additional money. So added the, uh, the current inflation that we're in. So many people are, are focused on trying to hoard their wealth in the last days. There are people who started uh, devouring uh, in the morning they have brunch, they have lunch, they have uh, uh, afternoon tea, dinner, midnight snacks, all kinds of, we continue to indulge our heart. We may say a certain uh, uh, thing to our uh, uh, children and there's something, uh, it's something that they couldn't uh, bear to take. In the end time, the Bible has made it clear about the change in human heart. We're living in the, uh, according to the image of gold, we're at the ten toes now. So the whole world is uh, after mammon. About pleasure, fleshly pleasure. And also uh, arbitrary in ter terms of deciding what's right and wrong. And also Daniel chapter 3, therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, and all kinds of music, all the nations and peoples of every language fell down and worshiped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So things that we're trying to exalt and trying to draw attention to ourselves. So it seems like uh, the young people are pursue, go after those movie stars. We're trying to, uh, do we in the church also trying to uh, set up a, uh, uh, so that our, our church uh, a congregation member would would pursue us like as if they're pursuing uh, 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 celebrities. So here we've seen we need to try to understand those that were providing pastoral care. We need to understand where they're at. So the God says to us, we need to be able to discern the situation in our current realm. Once again, it tells us that these things in Revelation. Chapter 12, verse 12, therefore rejoice you heavens and you who dwell in them, but woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. We've seen the change in humans' heart and also how they indulge in themselves. There are no more a uh, sense of righteousness anymore. Lest we forget, do we use do we do, uh, do we uh, uh, churches do we think that use of four walls of the church will be able to protect our church members or actually all of us uh, not only our members including pastors themselves were also in that big die uh, the vat of big die that were uh, were being uh, uh, impacted were completely uh, being uh, immersed in this, uh, a, a vat of uh, dyes of different color, just like we talked about the hardening of the soil yesterday. So in our larger environment, overall environment, how do we to develop uh, a good quality with our heart, with the soil? Are we able to let God uh, to have a freedom to work in our life? Are we to what extent do we provide the liberty of God to work freely within us? To what extent do we absorb his word? To what extent are, are we able to respond to his word? We discovered that in the midst of it, the most critical thing is that God's, what is, how does God prepare his leaders among uh, his, uh, 
as uh, people. First of all, God select his uh, leaders, regardless who the leaders are, all of them, uh, uh, all of us could be leaders uh, in, in preparation that God is training for. So we're gonna see what's the relationship with the prayer altar. Let us read. Now the people complained about their hardship uh, to the hearing of the Lord. And when he heard them, his anger was aroused and fire from the Lord burned among them and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. When the people cried out to Moses, he prayed to the Lord and the fire died out. So that place was called Taborah because the fire from the Lord had burned among them. The rabble with them began to crave other food. And again, the Israelites started wailing and said, if only we had meat to eat, we remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. Here we notice that, that one of the greatest leader is uh, Moses, that he led a group of people and left Egypt to build a kingdom. But here, there's a group of us, the Bible called the mixed multitude. We don't know the specific number. Uh, it's like a motley crew. So as a leader like Moses, he encountered a group of uh, people that really uh, defile the, the quality of the people he led. They have no direction, no purpose, no meaning, no vision. They're able to impact those around them to incite further complaints. They're not willing to accept. They're not willing to follow along. So as a church or as a group or in a nation for the believers in a church, when you have this mixed multitude of motley crews, they have no vision. They complain about what they need. their the problems, their marriage, their needs, their economics, their interpersonal relationship. You discover that no matter what you mention about the national transformation, about the kingdom of God arriving in our midst, or the goal that God had for Singapore, these people would not be interested at all. They don't care at all. They felt like these had nothing to do with them. So these mixed altitude, what exactly are they? Although, for the last few sessions, we mentioned about this. So you have someone from the power of darkness moving into the kingdom of God. It's like the mixed altitude. This person is not able to uh, receive the vision uh, from the kingdom of God, nor receive the uh, mandate from God. So continue to do his own thing, complain about his own stuff. So you discover that with this kind of quality, if you have a church with huge number of people, but if all of them are of this quality, regardless of whether it's in Singapore, uh, in Taiwan, in China, in Malaysia, if a high percentage of our church members are like this, then regardless of how large numerically uh, is that church, that church has no impact in the society. So here we know this, that Moses is such a critical person. What do we see in his life? We look at Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, we haven't seen that their uh, are leaders uh, for a, a, a major era, era. So after crossing the Red Sea uh, in Exodus, it tells us about so many examples of how, how the mixed multitude had responded to Moses. They're not part of the, uh, they could be part of the 12 tribes, they may not be. Uh, they're able to incite, to stir up, so they have influence. They're able to change the direction for the group of people leaving Egypt and slow down the progress, this, the rate of moving forward, or completely to miss out on God's direction for them. You notice that at one place at Mara in Exodus here, when they came to Mara, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Mara. So the people grumbled against Moses saying, what are we to drink? So Moses just left Egypt after the 10 plague. They have all seen the water. Now that it's a bitter, let us ponder. 
that I mean, if it was bitter, then that means what what uh, Moses drank was also bitter. So, but Moses did not complain. So we see a huge uh, distinction between Moses and the the group of people that he led. So, so the bitterness of the water, how is it related to our heart? Oftentimes we hear, brothers and sisters, or even we may think, what use is it to read the word of God? That in a church, I do this thing and I do that, but my life is still the same. But what does this have to do with pastors? But these are something to do with our relationship with God. So do leaders, do we leaders lead our church member into a better relationship with God? That's the key. So as we continue here, a few times, uh, the Israelites continue to challenge Moses. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, then we set around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought up us out of into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. So, so here the people grumbled about if they were in Egypt, even as slaves, they had tons of food around. They can eat all the food they want. I trust that Moses, as he, uh, whether the water problem or, or, or they use, uh, basically he's trying to threaten Moses with their lives. We need to be able to see clearly where exactly are the problems. How do, do their complaints are related to us? In Rephidim, they complain about the lack of water. The whole Israelite community set out from Desert of Sin, traveling from place to places as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim where there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses replied, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there and they grumbled against Moses. They said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock died of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. You discover that. They travel with Moses, leaving Egypt. And then they bring, they bring all the silverware and all the things from their Egyptian neighbors out. Now, but now here in the desert and wilderness, there are no water, no meat. They continue to complain. They continue to test the Lord. And even... They even used their life, uh, the threat of their lives to threaten against Moses. And they were almost ready to stone Moses to death. You can imagine the pressure that Moses was undergoing, how tremendous those were. So actually, what does water have to do with you? What does food have to do with you? Then we see that all these challenges, now Moses is about to encounter the fourth challenge. It's a huge a threat to his authority. He asked the Lord, why have you brought this trouble on your servant? What have I done to displease you that you put the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth? Why do you tell me to carry them in my arms as a nurse carries an infant to the land you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where can I get meat for all these people? They keep wailing at me. Give us meat to eat. I cannot carry all these people by myself. The burden is too heavy for me. If this is how you're going to treat me, please go ahead and kill me. If I have found favor in your eyes, and do not let me face my own ruin. So here, here at the, at Kibrath Hataba. So there Moses says, if I find favor in your eyes, would you please remove that heavy burden, too heavy burden on me? It is too overwhelming for me. You might as well go ahead and kill me, please. So you discovered that this, pr this pressure was more than what Moses could bear, that he was almost collapsed. Whether they were trying to threaten them with, his life, with their lives or trying to stone him to death, 
in the end, Moses says, I might as well kill myself, or Lord, may you grant me my death. So all these complaints, the people were not able to follow the way of God and create, were able to, to almost choke off, the, uh, no matter how great the leader Moses was. So, so Moses said, God, if I should find favor in your eyes, grant me death. Now, of course, Moses was not the only one encountered this, whether it's Elijah, Jeremiah, or Jonah. So we recognize that in the past, Moses, did Moses have other experience in, in overcoming, encountering uh, setbacks and difficulties before? Yes. But now, without the water, or when there's without uh, meat, God sent them quails. So whenever the people complain, as, as long as Moses conveyed those complaints to God, God would resolve these complaints. So whether it's water, whether it's manna, a quails, and, and Rephidim, and also at the at Kibrath Hatava, we discovered that the Moses, that the quality of his heart continued to digress and sink continue to uh, keep sinking and all these the most critical thing is did moses know that if he continued to ask of water if he continued to pray to ask and intervene and then the bitter water becomes sweet water that if he continued to intercede why did moses uh, tell god this is too heavy for me you might as well kill me this is too heavy for me. I cannot carry all these people by myself. The burden is too heavy for me, Moses says. Now, now what about Aaron? Where were they? So Moses had dealt with those complaining voices. But why is it that this time, the fourth time, that he finally decided he wanted to die instead? He said to God, Moses said, this is too heavy for me. I cannot carry all these people by myself. So the burden is too heavy for me. So what was God's response then? The Lord said to Moses, bring me 70 of Israel's elders who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people. Have them come to the tent of meeting that they may stand there with you. I will come down and speak with you there. Then I will take some of the power of the spirit that is on you and put it on them. They will share the burden of the people with you so that you will not have to carry it alone. So here, so they will bear the burden of managing this people, not just uh, Moses. Now you have 70 elders. So, so God says, bring me 70 of these elders. Come to the tent meeting. Have them stand there with you for them to rise up and jointly partake in managing these people. Next, we see the Lord answered to Moses, is the Lord's arm too short? Now you will see whether or not what I say will come true to you for you. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together 70 of their elders and them to stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke with him. And he took some of the power of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. When the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but did not do so again. So we discover here that 70 elders, their uh, mission is, God says, so Lord says, is my arm too short? Now you will see whether or not what I say will come true for you. So find 70 elders and bring them here. The Lord will come down and took some of the power of the spirit that was on Moses and put it on the 70 elders so that they would be moved by the spirit to prophesy. So here, so God uh, sort of uh, share some of the uh, anointing on, on Moses and spread it out to the 70 elders. Oftentimes we think, were the 70 elders supposed to uh, 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 
be able for them to uh, channel their complaint or be able to resolve certain crisis or help Moses to speak on his behalf, put in some good words for him? No, not at all. Because what responsibility did uh, Moses want them, the 70 elders, to, to undertake? If we don't truly understand the verses, then we would uh, be completely led astray. So God entrusted, so God wanted the 70 people to join into this group to, to, to uh, manage, to lead the people. Remember the father-in-law for Moses, Jethro, asked him to set up uh, uh, the rulers of fifties, of tens, of a hundred, uh, rulers of thousands. And Moses at the time, did raise up this group of leaders, rulers. But of course, these individuals, what quality were those? Moses' father-in-law said unto him, the thing that thou dost is not good, thou wilt surely wear away. But those and this people that is with thee, but this people thing is too heavy for thee, thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and God shall be with thee, be thou for the people to God word that thou mayest bring the causes unto God, and thou shalt teach them ordinary uh, ordinances and laws, and shall show them the way wherein they must walk and the work they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of the people able men, such as fear God, a uh, God of truth, uh, hot, hating covetousness, and place such over them, so to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, rulers of tens, and let them judge the people at all seasons, and it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter thou shalt judge. So shall it be easier for yourself, and they shall bear the burden with you. That they need to, you need to bear these burdens for the people. So for we as pastor, we need to pray and share the word of God. In the end time, it's not just, it's not that only pastors are full-time. In the end time, all of us, even church members are full-time. We need to, we need to bear the burdens with them. We need to bring their needs and be able to come before the people and, and intercede for them and bring their cases before God. You need to uh, represent them to come before God. Number one, you, you bring the problems on behalf of these people and come before God on their behalf and, and teach them the ordinance, the laws, and enable them to be they will need to become rulers of uh, thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, rulers of tens. So the most important thing is what? You need to come uh, before the God. And the other thing you need to do is they need to have a function to be able to teach them about the statutes and the laws. So all of us, we need to come, uh, so they need to stand before God for the people so that you may bring the difficulties to, uh, to God. Whether it may be a leader at home, as a leader, you need to know, be able to bring the problems before God and then be able to turn toward them and share the statues of God with them. So what the rulers of thousands. So here, it did not, did not say anything about managing the people. Do we think that at church, we need to manage a system of managing them? Some people is a psychologist, some is a uh, uh, pastoral care 
you hear you discover here the bible says it's not like that so last verse and this way it says if you do these things then you'll be able to endure and these people will also go to their place in peace so they will bear the burden with you says jethro the bear So that means there will be, they will jointly bear the burden with you. These rulers of ten, rulers of hundred, rulers of thousands. They're not what we think, like uh, uh, subgroup leaders, uh, uh, district leaders, or managers, or deputy managers. You have uh, section leaders. You have uh, <clears throat> department heads. But you discover here in the Bible, here it says that he needs to bear uh, all this and he could not. So the content of this, to bear this, to bring all the problems of the people, to bring them the problems before God, and then to submit, offer up their problems to God, and then to relay God's statutes and laws and teach those, turn around and teach these to the people. So the rulers of tens, rulers of fifties, rulers of hundreds and thousands, we they do not operate based on the word of uh, the uh, worldly system. Instead, they rule by the word of God, the value system of God. So whether your parents, or your leaders at home, do we truly do so according to God's ways? So here it says, this way you will lighten your load because they will jointly bear the, they will bear the burden with you. So Jethro already told Moses that these 70 elders, what are their purpose there? Have we paid attention to? Just now, when we look at the other verses in Mara or Rephidim, when they complain about the water, complain about the lack of water, about, complain about the bitterness of water. You've seen that the leaders were being raised up by God. They received the same. They're there to help to resolve the problem. So what the elders, 70 elders were set up trying to find water, to find meat? No. Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in your sight, that you have laid such burden of all these people upon me? If I conceive all these people, have I begotten them, that you should lay, say unto me, carry them in your bosom, as a nursing father beareth that sucking ch child? biggest problem is if you use the your cell phone to look at the bible so it's better to it's important if you look at it god's moses says to god why do you actually in the original word did not have uh, management Moses said to the Lord, why have you afflicted your servant? 03605. And also 05971, we look at the original word. 03605, it refers to all the whole, all of. And then H for Hebrew, 5971 means people. Now going back. If I should find favor before you, you would bring all of these individuals that they're burdened, nothing about management here, but they're not conceived by me. Did I conceive these people? No. So nothing here mentioned about managing them. So the rulers of 10 or 50 or 100 they're delegated with this responsibility to 
to represent the people to bring their problems before God. So these rulers of 10, 50, 100, they need to understand their role is to bring the problems of the people before God and then based on God, tell them for them to relay the teachings of God's statutes to the people. It says, I want to, it says, then I will come down and talk with you. I will talk, take of the spirit that is upon you and will put the same upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people with you that you may not bear it yourself alone. So we keep forgetting about God raised up these people uh, in certain group. For what purpose? They serve to function as the rulers of 10, of 50, of 100. So that to bear meaning, to lift up, to, to be able to support, to take up, be able to bring these problems, be, bring this burden before God. So God says, then I will, I will take of the spirit that is upon you and will put the same upon them, says the Lord, and they shall bear the burden of the people with you, that you may not bear it yourself alone. So imagine it's 600,000 uh, just males that came out, uh, leaving, that left behind Egypt. So the, clearly these, uh, the 70 elders or the rulers of tens and fifties are not there to uh, resolve the meat problems. Then you shall say to the people, consecrate yourself for tomorrow you shall eat meat for you have wept in the hearing of the Lord saying, who will give us meat to eat for it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you meat and you shall eat. You shall eat not one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor 10 days, nor 20 days, but for a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils and becomes loathsome to you because you have despised of the Lord who is among you and have wept before him saying, why did we ever come up out of Egypt? And Moses says, the people whom I'm among of the 600,000 men on foot, yet you have said, I will give them meat and that they may eat for a whole month. Shall flocks and herds be slaughtered for them to provide enough for them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to provide enough for them? And the Lord said to them, has the Lord's arm been shortened? Now you shall see whether what I will say will happen to you or not. So here you discover that the complaint came into the hear hearings of God. So it's not just 10 days, 15 days or 20 days, but the whole month. So much so that the people will find the meat to be loathsome. Even those, the male that were on foot were 600,000, not counting the women and children. So why is it that everything that causes Moses to find it so unbearable, that so much so that Moses pleaded to die in the end? We need a good management system. We need to have, uh, you know, security entry. But we don't tell brothers and sisters. We hear about the complaining noises. We've seen all these problems. They're not willing to read the word. They're not willing to pray. They continue to uh, be in the mire of their own problems. Shouldn't our life complain about uh, not having enough money, not having enough of this and that. So we discover that here, it's not a management problem. It's not a management issue. God tells us, tells Moses, my arm is not short. This burden is too heavy for you. So we see that in Numbers 11, verse 24 to 29, Moses went out and gathered 70 men of the elders among them around you. And the Lord said to them, I will 
took the spirit that was upon him and placed the same upon the 70 elders. And it happened when the spirit rested upon them that they prophesied, although they never did so again. But two men had remained in the camp. The name of one was Eldad and the name of the other Medad. And the spirit rested upon them, nor now they were among those listed, but they had not gone out to the tabernacle, yet they prophesied in camp. And a young man ran and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. So Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, one of his choice men, answered and said, Moses, my Lord, forbid them. Then Moses said to him, are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. So here that they were moved by the spirit and began to prophesy What they meant by prophecy was not about something that happened in the past, but be able to speak out the word of God. So here, Joshua, son of Nun, jo Moses, shouldn't you forbid them? Moses says, are you jealous for my sake? May, so the 70 elders you discover, their roses, not to find water, not to turn the water from bitter to sweet, not to find meat. No, none of that. None of that at all. But the 70 elders need to do something that is very, it's holy for them to speak, to prophesy, and to pass on the laws and ordinances from God to the people. Because they had the spirit of Moses. So important thing here is, look at the next It says, but the Levites shall do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generation, that among the children of Israel they have no inheritance. So they're not there to manage. They're not men's way, men's wisdom, a world system, a world's wisdom to manage. No. They need to pick a group of people from the house of God to be able to represent the people to bring their problems before God and be able to turn around and share the teachings of God's statutes with them. Why did Moses say, this is too much for me that I'd rather die? Because Moses had went through Mara, went through Rephidim, went through when there were no uh, meat. Moses knew clearly one situation is Lord, no matter how much meat you provide, they will complain, will continue to complain regardless of how much provision you provide to them. What is it? At this manna, it's not a, a problem of water. It's a complaint. It's a heart condition of men, the sinful nature of human, that they continue to complain. They can complain about any or everything. They could be so ungrateful about all the miraculous deeds of God, and they would continue to dwell on complaining. So from, uh, from the bitter water to with water. But then next time, when there's no water, they continue to complain and almost decided to, to stone him to death. They even threaten him. If you continue uh, the distance, we would rather die instead. they did not realize that they're supposed to share the burden. It's like a group of famished people. No matter how much food you offer them, they will never be satisfied. It's like Moses was stunned. No matter, every time I come before you, Lord, I've taught them your laws and statutes, and I've uh, share, uh, mentioned their problems before you about the bitter water, about how to overcome problems. One time and again, time and again, but every time, even after all that God had done, they continue to forget and be ungrateful. And the next time something comes up, they continue to complain. So 
one, once again, God uh, raised up so many testimonies around us, but we continue to forget, we continue to complain about our own problems. We continue, we habitually complain. We continue to, uh, to exalt ourselves, to attack the church of God. We continue to hear Moses continue to bring the problems before God and then also teach his people the way of God and also bring the meat problem before God and again to teach people about the word of God. And finally, Moses says, enough, Lord. Is it one day, two days, five days a month? Lord, it's not the meat problem. It's their sinful nature problem. No matter, no matter what you provide, they will continue to complain. This is so much so that I, Moses, can no longer bear these. All these sins are too burdensome for me. Our arrogance, our pridefulness, our rebellious heart that Moses was in such a deep despair that he rather died. Could we also see this, the world's problem? So much so that we become despair. We think that one time and again, time and again, the, the, uh, that uh, this world system is against the way of God. But God says he will raise up people. He will raise up ways. God says he will raise up the Levite. The Levites are out of the 12 tribes to represent on behalf of the 12 tribes to do this work. The churches of Singapore, you're the Levites among the nation of Singapore. Same thing, the Malaysian churches, you are the Levite among the nation of Malaysia. Same thing. So based on the inheritance of Jacob, it is not a management issue. It is not too many items, too many issues. It is not too many uh, matters. It's not interpersonal relationship. It's not parenting issues. It's not uh, commercial issues. It's not employment issues. It's not, it is the ability to bear. Let us see what are ways to resolve this. There need to be a presence of God to resolve these problems. We notice that at the time of Moses, the Holy Spirit did not come. So when look at the latter half of Exodus or, or Leviticus, it described in detail that in the sanctuary for, for, for God's presence to be there, what are the requirements? Those are very clear. So why is it when we look at the, actually uh, the five books of Moses is like the root and foundation of this huge tree. So the five books of Moses, all the way from Genesis, from Cain and Abel, to the relationship men and, and God. And then in the first and two Kings, first and second Kings, we've seen, how nation, how do they resolve the problems with the sacrifice, all the different uh, 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 guilt offering, the, the, the peace offering, the grain offering. And God says, your lips are close to me, but your heart is far away from me. Also the major and minor prophets, How do they uh, be able to bring all this to pass at the prayer altar? The Bible tells us the churches at that place, in that nation, is that is the Levite uh, of that nation. You would tell that I have called you out of Egypt to become your God, you need to be holy for I am holy because uh, you are uh, a people of a holy God so that I've called you from among the nations to be my people. 
God has a major plan for us. For the priestly kingdom. Isn't he the best? God had called us to be a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So we could see that. He wants to, out of all the people, to raise the people to do what? To represent, to bring them before God and be able to share God's teaching. Uh, how did God train Moses? The real transformation starts from within. To be able to, to, uh, to renew him, renew Moses' attitude so that he... Moses would be able to see like Elijah that God would raise up others. We need to experience God to be able to sustain us as we confront the national problems. Many years ago, uh, almost all pastors only care about their own church. They don't care about their own nation, their society, or the nation's. But for the nation of the kingdom of God to come, does it only come into our heart or does it, how does it affect the society's problem? So we talk about the dimension, about the, how do we resolve and repair the relationship in the human and man, human and God and also the environment. No matter whether it's the rulers of 50s or the 70 elders, they need to come before God to bring the problems of the people before God and turn around and teach the laws and ordinance of God to these people. So leaders must understand how to receive all these different challenges. Moses was one of the greatest leader of all time. So he was able to have uh, first hand encounter in terms of meeting God. So the mixed multitude continue that they could not understand. The mixed multitude, they would cancel out all that what God's people were called to do. So they may look uh, to be so on the outside, but they continue to complain. So we need to come before God and say the word of God to a generation, how important it is to every generation. We talk about the changes, uh, about the changes with people's heart in, in Second Peter. And, uh, Second Timothy. Uh, have we seen that in the house of God, God raised up many of his people, cell group leaders, whether at families and so to pay attention, to bring large and small things before God at the prayer altar. Many leaders, many in the marketplace, we bring it to the conference room table instead of bringing it to the prayer altar. Well, you don't even know that these are problems. So here in the whole life of Moses, in the face of all these challenges, even after the last 3000 plus years, we're still learning. The law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Without the laws, we would not know what grace and the truth are. Actually, uh, grace and truth are the synonymous with law. The revival of a church has to come from the prayer altar. It needs to be saturated by the word of God. Are we able to be uh, uh, repair and trimmed by the word of God? Are we able to uh, retain a, a, a sound quality in our heart? 
So we discovered that. We discovered that our children, their resilience are high. Are we able to see that as we're willing to uh, uh, follow God's word, if we don't have the first group who's willing to lay the foundation about the importance of God's word, this group of Levites, regarding of all the societal problems, issues, we're not able to have any impact unless actually transformation and revival had to start from the house of God. Today, we see many uh, things about the, that resist, movements that resist the word of God, but God never says, you need, to, uh, you need to deal with those people first. That all these that are non-believers, God says, bring these problems before us, me, God. When the quality of his people begin to change, when their resilience are strengthened, when they're willing to follow the way of God, these leaders could only begin be able to transmit the way of God effectively to the people. And we keep on thinking, we, we keep, we were misled thinking that we use a worldly management system to manage God's house. If you use concordance or strong numbers, management is not a word in there. So how do we use a group as church to be able to stabilize, to be have revival, to have transformation the key had to do with the, the one twelfth that the Levites, the whole tribe of Levites, are they willing to follow the word of God? Are they willing to bring the problems of the other 11 tribes to come before God and be able to, it's for the family, the priests at the family, we're willing to bring the, the family problems before God and be able to teach God's teaching to our family members. Same thing with Christians, uh, uh, people in the marketplace. We see the problems at the, at the companies, in our corporations. And we know that uh, some of the things that our companies do are not in accordance to God's ways. Are we willing to stand in a gap and intercede and repent on behalf of our companies, on behalf of our organization? Are we able to then transform uh, the way of God into ways that the non-believers could understand and receive? Whether we're in, in, in school, on campus, this, the most important role that he has given to us is as priests. God, uh, Moses cried out to him, enough, Lord. I know you could give meat. Your arms are not short. I know you could give us water. I know you could be able to turn bitter water to sweet water. I know the whole earth belongs to you. You could turn the whole uh, uh, wilderness into rivers, but Lord, the people, their sins are too overwhelming. No matter how much grace you've given to these people, they continue to complain. No matter how much grace, how much mirac miracles you have performed, they continue to be ungrateful. As our life, just like those Israelites. How dark is our heart? Is it just like that, the second Timothy? It's full of, although our lips, we may build an altar on the outside, but what we want are all the image of gold from Babylon. We need those uh, expensive uh, uh, bags, those uh, brand names, those luxury, that we consider that as signs of revival to have luxury items. How misguided are we? How many brothers and sisters are we able to raise up to, to love the word of God, to, to live out the word of God, to be able to be live examples that God could use? How many of us are willing to to see this national problems and bring before God at our prayer altar. We're used to bring to the conference table. And we're used to going on the street and protest and march to use the world system to engage in protest march. But God's arms are not shortened. 
So when we uh, when we continue to follow these thinkings, we continue to face uh, oppression. We continue to dilute the quality of God. We continue to let the us ourselves to be the part of the mixed multitude. We have no vision, no direction, no meaning, no purpose. We need to raise up uh, elders or rulers that are familiar with the word of God, that are very familiar with the God. Why do we, uh, the prayer altar is not another movement. It is God's heart desire if you go and look through all the way from Old Testament to the New Testament. If you want those material things, what you eat, what you wear, what you drink, if you only focus about your own self-gratification, the, 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 the Greek uh, value system of uh, individual, exalting the individual, we'll see that. To what extent have we realized the roles that God has entrusted to us to become a nation of priesthood? In this holy nation of priesthood, that this group of individuals, this is what God desires. We look at the next PowerPoint. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him his the inequity of us all. What does Jesus do? We look at Isaiah in the Old Testament, compare that with uh, First Peter in the New Testament. All talks about uh, Old Testament, we lay iniquity on God. And here in the New Testament, uh, Jesus was, uh, was on the cross. God continued to do the same thing. What he has, the anointing of the Holy Spirit on Jesus, he now is able to share that with us. What do we need to undertake? Not to show off our anointings, our giftings, no, we're not to show off about our church or we're not trying to engage in this Babylonian uh, building way of building. The Holy Spirit is upon us so that we're able to co-labor, to co-bear, to jointly bear these problems with him. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, so you would uh, be able to call, this was given to who? Isn't it given to all believers though? To be a holy nation. So when Joshua says, So when Joshua says, ask him to stop, Moses says, are you jealous? God is trying to raise up more people. May there be more people who are able, willing to be raised up to share God's teaching clearly. We have all kinds of church activities, but we are completely unfamiliar with the word of God. We're so busy with so many different activities. We continue to, uh, to brainwash our children. But what exactly are we teaching them with? To use a world system, world, uh, worldly wisdom, or do we use the way of God to, to, to teach our children? So much so that we're able to open up the heaven by the presence of the Holy Spirit. God has given us enough strength, not pandemic, not the econ uh, economies, not educational system, not wars, not the uh, environmental issues, but the issue of sin. 
It's the sin that brings about the, the COVID pandemic. It's a sin that brings about the war. It's a sin that brings up the problems with parenting. All the issues, the root issue has to do with human sins. And sins has to be resolved. And the most effective way is through the prayer altar. God uses the leaders, a group of individuals upon God's calling who are willing those qualified priests. Here, you look at the video clip here, the, the animation. On your left, it's God. And on the right, it's the uh, people. Then you have the tabernacle in the middle between God and people. So here, It's just like a, an egg that was conceived by the sperm. And you're not able to see the limbs of the fetus yet. So you have the, you know, the holy and the holy of holies and at the, uh, at the tabernacle. So you discover that between man and God, this is a system. The fall of a human being, if you don't resolve the issue with sins, if they don't, they don't remove sins and bring down the power of God. So see here, if they do not have sins, they Whether the sin of shedding of innocent blood, the sin of unbelief, when all the sins, when all the priests bring all these uh, sacrifice, Just like the sins were being uh, digested or uh, dissolved. But if priest and, and himself or herself are in the midst of sin, then if our current churches, if we're not, Then we become just like part of the mixed multitude. That all that we think of are full of evil. We talk about our own thing, about when we gather together for prayers, we're praying for our own individual gratification. All about ourselves, not about godly issues, not about issues of importance to God. Not about issues that are relevant or concerned to God. If we continue to focus our own individual needs, this world, the world loves mammon, and, and we too follow the world. The world enjoys uh, envying and, and jealousy, and we continue. The world enjoys unforgiveness. We too enjoy that. This world loves about the fleshly pleasure. We too like the same thing. So we discover that the world likes luxury items, so do we.
the all sort of un ungratefulness about all the things that were mentioned in Second Timothy in the end time. How do we resolve these issues here? So when we have sins, all these things, we need to bring them We're not able to bear all this. Even Moses could not bear these. We're not able to undertake this. So we think that in, even with Moses, he could not in the Old Testament. Yes, Jesus himself was able to bear all our sins. And God, between people, we discovered that the priest, when the priest was able to let the church be set apart, to be filled with the word of God, this, when we're able to bear this, then the church would be able to help remove the sin and the people would be awakened and to realize the blindness that covered their, like the veil that covered their heart. Otherwise, we, we misunderstood about uh, management. We think to, of using manpower or men's wisdom. We're trying to let people understand this. How do people understand about sins? How do we know that we have uh, been uh, been stepping away, been going down the wrong path? So how would why would people envy about the church if the church is just like they are? If not, the church is unable to bear the problems of the society. So we thank God for Jesus for being able to look at the Bible verses. For you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Why didn't he say uh, why did he not say uh, uh, a royal Christian? Why did he say about royal priesthood instead of royal Christian? Because the priesthood is important to God. So it did not, it was not canceled during the New Testament. Because our high priest, Jesus Christ himself, to bear all these, he has given us the ability to bear at the prayer altar, we are able to bear more than what Moses had because we have the help of the Holy Spirit with us. So look at the next group of PowerPoint. This is like redemption by the bloodline. We bow before God and say, so the, so the person, uh, so the orange color uh, represents uh, God himself. So it's like, but then you have a, a like a hook with the black but in there there's the inner self the inner man the the, the blue color men the inner man within this figure of all the problems about the earth about the environment so what power is it and that enable him Things that not even government would be able to have. So redemption by the bloodline, you come before God. So just like Jesus himself, we come 
we like the cape of Jesus uh, that uh, covers over us, we come before him. We're still part of the world. So the next slide, <clears throat> as we stand in a gap, interceding for God to be merciful, come before God, we humble ourselves to bring all the problems before him at the prayer altar. We ask God to forgive of these people who have committed the sins knowingly or unknowingly <clears throat> and to be able to remove the hook from the forces of darkness that was uh, uh, obvious from the prior screen so that for this person to be set apart you discover on the third slide here that we would be able to stand in a gap to be able to bring down uh, proclaiming about the forgiveness of sin and bring down his healing. Not only did Jesus um, bear these, but he's also our closest relative. We could proclaim about forgiveness and bring down his healing. Although we're still in the midst of sin, but if we're still in the midst of sin, if, we're, we, if we don't read the word of God, we simply do not have the power to do so. We need both. If we don't start diligently reading the word of God, how could we ever understand the word of God? Then how would we be effective in interceding? How would we be effective in bearing these problems and bring them before God? If we continue to uh, be involved with our personal matters only, lest we forget we need to find qualified priests. No matter how deep are our sins, Moses could not bear that anymore because Moses was limited. So Jesus already fully born all this. At the time of Jesus, he was able to bear all of these sins. So now we're able to co-labor with Jesus to be able to intercede for others, to be able to stand in a gap, whether for society, for a nation, whether educational systems problem, regardless in what field, all these issues, we do not need to panic because we know we are living in the end time. Those who are able to bear these are the loyal, royal priesthood a holy nation. But the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Because all authority and power was given to the house of God. So judgment comes to the house of God first. We need to know that that started. The altar is where the, all the power be able to activate it comes from. Are we in the stage of where we, we completely abandon the position that God has given us? That we completely surrender to the enemy? Or we simply look lightly on, we completely disregard the call that he has called us to be, become his priest, be part of his priesthood. If, if our focus is to satisfy our own Babylonian desire for luxury, for pleasure, we need to realize the ability to earn a living comes from God himself, not that something that we need to seek after. We don't need to seek that. We need to truly understand all the inheritance of the Levites belong to God. We need to see the importance of society and the nation. Why? Ecclesia. It's not something that only happened in the New Testament. It's like in the Messianic believers, 
They don't call church. The Jewish Messianic believer called themselves congregation. Ecclesia is a Greek word. Congregation is started from the Old Testament idea. So we need to understand that the same role. Before the church, an important function is was the temple for us to become the dwelling place of God. For what purpose? Be able to reconcile the problems between human and God, between the problems between human and the environment. For us to see the absolute requirements that God has for us, those whom He called. We're able to arise and bear all these problems together with the Holy Spirit. We know that all these challenges, those who are uh, under the bondage of the forces of darkness, we know that one day they'll be able, to, together with the Holy Spirit, we'll be able to push away the force of darkness so that the lamb will walk and the blind will see. We will truly understand that God has given us the presence and the power of his presence. The same that was given to the 70 elders. We have the Holy Spirit, the, the same authority of Christ Jesus. So that's why God says, if we, if we find in heaven, it will be bound on earth. If we betray uh, the, the, what God has called us to do, we're essentially not offering up the best we could. Then what they offer, the sacrifice we offer is similar to what Cain had offered, not what Abel had offered. May God today and these three messages to help us understand that transformation and revival it's full of the word of god the treasure of god's word may the word of god fill his people may the power from the word of god and the power from god's presence We thank Pastor Lily. Uh, although there are many sins, but we thank God that we have one who's able to bear all this, and he was able to bear all of this. We thank the Lord for this. Now, we want to uh, respond to prayer. We want to thank uh, Bethany. Uh, we invite everyone to continue to remain online tonight yes we thank god uh, through pastor lily who shared this important message with us uh, this is reverend uh, uh, serena ang of bethany presbyterian church so now together as we uh, quiet ourselves for a bit intercede for those uh, and a power of authority over this nation
，上帝已经把他的心意向我们显明。我们身为祭司的，真的要成为神跟人。Priest, we need to serve as a、uh, the the intermediary between God and human. Instead of keep on seeking、uh, individual gratifications, our、uh, Babylonians'、uh, value system of、uh, exalting the self, the material needs. So,、uh, for our church, for our、uh, brothers and sisters, let us、uh, pray out aloud. Yes, Lord, we come before you and we offer thanksgiving and gratitude. How deeply you love us that you have shared this message with us. Only when you do the selection, otherwise we 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 know that we're collected by you. We're the royal priesthood, the holy nation. That we're a part of your special people. Now, according to your precious name, we lift up、uh, those in authority of our nation before you. You have called them to in terms of governing. In terms of governing according to God's word, according to your prompting and your value system, to lead and、uh, the people, so that your people, so that our nation, would be able to is to glorify your name, and not based on selfish fleshly desire. But forgive our nation. Forgive our nations for the sins like mammon, seeking material goods, material accumulation of material wealth. We forgot about your call. We forgot that your call is how do we enter into your nations. Lord, forgive us. Through the blood of the Lamb, we move that our. Uh, insatiable need for material wealth, especially in this age. There's so many times that we we sell off.、Uh, we have the、um, a godly appearance only. Lord, you tell us that we need to depart. But oftentimes we don't understand. We resist the word of God. Only we betray the word of God. We abandon the word of God. We do enjoy in all the activities except to read your word, follow, and help us give us a willing heart to learn. That you have already given. That you have given us to the intermediary, the Holy Spirit. That help us to learn how to build your church in a way that is pleasing to you. Lord, give us grace. Give may you safeguard your church, especially amongst those of us, and enable us to understand each time as we build the prayer altar, as we draw near to you, to draw your presence to us, that you will reveal to us about your heart desire regarding our nation, regarding those in power of authority. To be able to reveal your heart desire to the leaders of our nation, so that in the end time, you will raise up a mighty army, army of Jehovah,、uh, to engage in spiritual battles, able us, to, so that more people will be able to enter into the kingdom of God. We are the royal priesthood, be able to share. The message about those who had redeemed us, enable us to leave behind the power of darkness, enter into your glorious light. Lord, in the end time, yes, for sure, the judgment will come upon your house first. You've given us plenty of opportunity to return, to turn back, and、uh, and submit to you, to call out upon your name. May your grace not only come upon us, but come upon our family, those whom we love. Father God, help us, enable us to be willing in one accord as we pray. We trust that in the end times, God would raise up all of the priests, not to satisfy their own heart desire, 
but to want to edify the heart, uh, the heart desire of God, so that enable us to see the nations need to be transformed, the churches need to be transformed, our individual life needs to be transformed, because none are indispensable. May you treat your church with grace, safeguard your church. May your church truly be the salt and light of the earth. May glory belong to you. We proclaim and pray in Jesus' name. We can pray and bring our family, our nation before God, seek his kingdom, his righteousness. Once again, we thank Pastor Lily Liu over the last three days to share about this important message. Once again, to stir up our desire, hunger for God. We appreciate the team. Before we conclude, there's some announcements I need to make. So um, we appreciate your attention. The SG247, uh, uh, it's our heart desire in Singapore that we hope SG247, it's uh, it's a uh, within Christ Jesus to become a body across the nomination. We believe that God had called us to be set apart. May ours be sent forth. As we sent forth, we hope that in Singapore, SG247 will continue to build up his dwelling place. So we hope that God is finding a place where we welcome Lord Jesus to become king over the generations here in Singapore. So we have a 24 hour uh, we encourage uh, those amongst us if you have not joined 20, uh, Singapore 247 then we ask invite you to pray and, and ask of God whether uh, we invite, we encourage you to join. Uh, we will send out this uh, uh, prayer guidance. Uh, you just need to tell us that uh, you're willing, uh, that you, uh, if you have two or three together with you, send a message, text to WhatsApp 8022-3360 and provide information about uh, the the uh, intercessory cell group uh, group leader, the phone number, the church that he or she belongs to, and also the name for this uh, intercessory uh, group. And then uh, we're trying to find out a fixed time. Uh, so we hope that in 24 seven uh, each day, that there will be at least one group that cover intercede uh, uh, to be like a watchman uh, over Singapore. And we hope that uh, be able to exalt the uh,